Hello and welcome back to Coding with T. Today's tutorial is going to be very informative because we are going to learn the routes, middlewares and route observers with the back button and the forward button of the browser. So first of all, let's quickly have a look what we are going to achieve. Pat Okanier, okay, I have opened a project which is hosted at Coding with T dash. This is the URL on which you can visit this already uploaded admin panel. Inside this admin panel, you can see on the left side, we are not going to design the sidebar because sidebar tutorial will start from the next section, which is the third section, in which we covered in detail all the sidebar and how it is going to be handled. But in today's tutorial, we are going to see that how we can manage the different screens because if you watch the previous tutorial which is about managing the routes using named version in which at the top you can see currently a dashboard screen has appeared and at the top we are seeing the dashboard written over there and if i am going to open this media and you can see the media is selected and if i am going to go for the banners at the top you can see the urls are being changed so this is what we learned in the previous tutorial so in today's tutorial we are going to focus on how we are going to manage all these different screens properly in a professional manner and above all we are going to learn something called middleways which might not be easily available on the youtube or on the google maybe you have to look for it or search for it which is using middleways in your applications let's say i'm going to open this dashboard so when i click on this middleware is going to take my request and go to the middleware then it is going to refine that either this screen should be appeared to the user or whatever logic i have written in, inside that middleware and the third thing is we're going to learn the route observers what is route observer basically when we are going to click on these two arrows flutter is not directly allowing us to deal with these two errors so it is not going to add all these screens into history so to manage these two arrows the foreground and background operations let's say i'm going to go for the media media is written over here and i'm going to click on this back button you can see dashboard is selected and we have redirected back to the dashboard screen but if i'm going to open the project that we created in the previous tutorial, which is currently in a test phase. So in the previous tutorial, when we redirected to the default navigation and inside over here, when I'm going to click on this back button and now again, you can see this is still enabled. When I'm clicking this, it is not working or not taking me anywhere. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn how we are going to handle these two operations as well. So let's get started. We are creating Flutter e-commerce admin panel and we are about to complete our second section which is the route section if you're new you can watch the previous videos link is in the description so let's get started with today's tutorial on the left side you can see we have a routes folder that we created while creating our project structure and now inside this route folder i'm going to create a new you can select the file or the dart file which is over here so i'm going for the dart file name it routes now the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to deal with all the static files if you follow the previous tutorial inside you can see we have to use this name navigation this means that we have to define all these names one by one so instead of finding these strings we are going to define all these routes right over here so we are going to create a simple class i'm going to name it t routes inside to directly access without creating an instance we have to define the variable as a static it will be a constant variable and i'm going to name it as let's say or let's assume it is a login screen so what will be the url of this login screen i'm going to define it like this and that's it so this is how we are going to define all the routes let me show you an example over here over here you can see i have created uh, all the routes that we are going to use inside our application and by using this approach app.dart you can see we have second screen with the forward slash and second screen colon user id so you can also use these approaches as well so inside the routes you just have to define the strings or the routes that you want to use these are simply a string values or simple variables with a simple class you can name it anything you can name these variables anything as you like so in our scenario we are going to or i am going to simply change these first screen and second screen the way we did in the previous tutorial but not inside over here but inside these string values so i have defined these three names the first screen is the default which is the initial screen then we have a second screen this forward slash means that we are going to use another same screen you can see second screen over here but this time we are going to use something with this one which is the user id so i have named it second screen with uid now once we defined all the routes and in the next section we are also going to 
define the sidebar menu items list over here so now once these things are defined we are going to create a new file and i'm going to name it create a simple class name it t app route and it's empty if we head towards this app to dart and inside you can see we converted our material app to get material app to use all the get state management features and in here you can see a new option which is get pages so instead of defining all the pages over here for a large application it will be a very messy app dart file and it is not a good approach so to handle this we are going to hover over this get pages and you can see it requires a list of get page so we are going to create a list of get pages because this is a list so let's create it inside this class i'm going to name it you can create all these things in one class as well but i'm going to use a separate classes for a modular approach so again it will be static so that we do not have to create the instance we can call these variables directly using t app route dot name of this instance which will be a list list of type get page that we are going to use and i'm going to name it pages you can name it anything because it is list so create a list now inside this list what we have to return we have to return this get page so let's create a get page and inside get page we need to provide two things the first one is the name which will be in string name of the route so we are not going to manually define the names over here because we already have defined the names so i'm going to call p routes class dot first screen and then as a page which screen i want to return will be defined over here this means that whenever this string will be used which is the first screen whenever i'm going to pass this string it should open this page or this screen to, to the ui or on the ui so let's create a function make it a constant and we have a screen that we want to display which is the first screen at a comma so first screen will be visible whenever we are going to call this first screen using name routes so let's control d to duplicate second screen should open the second screen and also second screen with ui uid should again open the second screen so this is going to accept the user uid and this is not going to accept anything but they both are going to open the second screen this is just an example so we are going to by this way define all the names so I, uh, let me quickly create or display you all the names so currently you can see i just copy and paste it we have a get page over here with a name and then we have a page and by this way we have all the products and do not worry about this middlewares we are going to create them in a few minutes so by this way now you can understand that why we are creating separate classes for each page because in large applications we have to manage the things accordingly okay so we are done with two things we have created our pages we have created our routes over here now inside this app dart we are not going to use this get pages but we're going to call our t app route dot pages and we don't need these pages as well in here you can define the initial route initial route requires a string so i'm going to pass this first screen which will be this forward slash now this will be treated as the initial route and also using get material lab or the get x we can define unknown route and also on unknown route so these are two things unknown route we have to define again a get page over here because this will be triggered whenever the unknown route appeared so let's say i'm going to define it page not found and as a page because we have to return inside this function a screen so we do not have yet screen so i'm going to create a scaffold right over here so as an unknown route we will display this url which is page not found and as a page we are going to display the screen which is scaffold center and in the center we have a text page not found okay now let's try to run our application okay so our application is running and currently we redirect it to the first screen this means that the default operation is working now let's go to the next screen which is the second screen using get x navigation it is working with the name navigation because this is what we have just created so at the top you can see second screen is written the way we want it and let's say we're going to pass the data and also it is working very fine because we receive the data over here this means that both things are working second screen without data and second screen with data so that is working this means that so far we are good now minimize it the next thing is let's say let's assume that whenever user is going to click on this data to pass to the next screen but in this case we don't want to user or we want the user to be authenticated and if the user is only authenticated then he can access he or she can access this second screen so to check this definitely we have other ways 
but for the middleware for the additional security what we're going to do we are going to again create everything inside over here but i'm going to create a new class i've created a class which is routes middleware dot dot and inside i have created a simple class which is t route middleware you can name it anything now to use this i'm going to extend this class with a built-in get middleware so that we can use that features get middleware and inside we have to override few things so press ctrl o to override these are the functions that we can override and in the get middleware you can see we can use on page build start this means when page will be started redirect on page dispose page called page build redirect on binding start so we are going to use this redirect approach or redirect method this will be triggered whenever one screen is redirecting to another screen so this will be this method will be triggered and we have to override or return route settings inside it and this is the route that we are going to get you can see this function will be called when the page of the called route is being searched for it take route settings as a result and and redirect to the new settings or give it a null and when there is a null there will be no redirecting so you can see if this is the case user is not authenticated it is going to return the null otherwise it is going to let the user go to the login so because we do not have authentication of the user here at this stage but definitely we're going to implement it in the upcoming tutorials when we created our authentication so in this case i'm just going to create a variable is authenticated is equal to true which is a boolean variable and in that case i'm going to return is authenticated if it is true then we're going to return the null this means that we do not want or force the user to go to some specific settings but if user is not authenticated we do not want the user to proceed with these operations instead we want to user to go to the login screen so we will call the route settings so this is the route settings that we have to return and inside the route settings we are going to use the name property because we have to provide the name of specific screen on which we want to redirect so let's say we want to go for the routes dot first screen and we have to make this nullable so that it can accept the null over here and also we have to provide this string as null now it's the same exact function as in the override because in this case is authenticated will always be true so null will be triggered and this code is not or it is called a dead code but because we are testing the things so let's run this currently in this scenario whenever user is going to select or moving towards any screen he should be allowed to move to any screen because in this case we are making authenticated as true or to identify if it is working or not let's print something so i have write, written over here which is middleware called so now let's run this code okay so our screen is right here and let's open this run method now inside when i'm going to click on let's say go to the second screen and it is not triggering the reason is we created this route middleware but we have not yet declared the route middleware in which screen we want to use let's say we want to use in the first screen so we have to call the middlewares it is going to take a list of middlewares and in that list we are going to pass our own middleware which is a class so I'm also going to pass this middleware for this one as well. Now let's save it or rerun this again. And this time you can see even after refreshing, it first went through this middleware because first screen is appeared, which is sorry, the second screen. I think second screen is already, yes, this one is already created. So what it is redirecting to null, this means it is not going to redirect any screen and it is going to the second screen. This means it is working fine. But now this time in the middleware, let's make this to false. And this time it should always redirect back to the first screen, no matter whatever the case is. So let's refresh it. Okay, we can see a loop over here. And the reason of this loop is that it is redirecting back to the first screen. And the first screen is the default screen. So that's why we are currently inside the loop. So this case can never be true because this will remain looping because every time whenever the new screen appears which is the first screen it will trigger the middleware and that middleware is again going to redirect to the first screen but in real scenarios when user is not authenticated it is directly going to the login screen which will not let the recycle appear because at next it will return the null and that's it the login screen will write over there that is we are going to exactly do when we perform our authentications so don't worry about this the next thing is to handle the route observer and for that again i'm going to go for the routes create a new file so i have named it route underscore observer dot and the name of the class is same route observer 
you can name it anything again this time we have to extend it with the get observer so get observer is going to observe the routes for us so in this we have few overrides as well so press ctrl o to override so this is the get observer operations we have did pop when the pop will be appeared when the back button will be pressed this function will be triggered did replace remove and push this means that the next arrow whenever the next arrow will be appear, uh, triggered or oh, this function will be triggered so for the back operation we are going to use the did pop method so it is giving the errors because we cannot use the simple route we have to define the dynamic right next to the routes and also make it nullable so same for this one so you can see the error is gone now we can use the route and the previous route so this is the current route and this is the previous route from the history which is when the user is going to press the back button we are going to take our selected sidebar to the previously selected sidebar or to the previous screen so let me show you the code so this is or these are the two functions that we are going to implement once we have the sidebar controller or once we have the sidebar created and the reason to display these over here is just to give you the understanding that how it is going to work we are going to use the sidebar controller and we are going to check this previous route if it is not null let's say we are already at the end of the screen and at the back our application will be closed you can also display a pop-up message before closing the application right over here you can do whatever you want because it is a word function you do not have to return anything so we're going to check the previous route if it is not null we're going to loop through all the sidebar menus and we're going to check these sidebar menus one by one and if the previous route name is equal to the current route name then we're going to make the sidebar as active item to this one so it is when i'm going to click on this media button and now when i'm going to click on this back button it should first redirect to the previous screen and also trigger this or also make this active item as this dashboard so let's click on it and you can see it is now dashboard is selected and we are also redirected back to previous screen so let's say i'm going to go for the categories and from there i'm going to click this press but back button this dashboard is appeared or oh, this is how this route observer is going to work because these things are interlinked so i cannot show you the sidebars or everything right over here so you have to watch the upcoming videos make sure to subscribe and from there now onwards we are going to continue our rest of the admin panel videos once again thank you for watching and if you have any question you can ask me down below in the comments take care